Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some visual stuff. We've got some developer stuff. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dive in. Matt Allington from Accelerator BI has got a blog post about visually appealing Power BI reports. And he highlights one of the new sample files that Amanda Kofsky used in the desktop update. He talks about when you want to create those visually appealing Power BI reports, you have about three options. The first is that you can hire a graphics designer, which can be costly. The second one he talks about, he calls the case method, which is copy and steal everything. And I'm all about that, as long as, you know, give credit where credit's due. And with that, he points out a couple of places where you can go get inspired and get ideas Ideas for what you can use inside of your reports. If you're interested in that and you're looking for a way to take your design or report design up to the next level, check out the link down below with his blog post so you can figure out what are some areas where you can get inspiration for those visually appealing reports. Fred Koffenberger over at Power Pivot Pro's got a blog post talking about the data warehouse. Did you think the data warehouse was dead? No, not so much. What he goes through, it talks about, really introduces you into what a data warehouse really is and what are some of the pieces that go along with it. This is kind of an intro into data warehousing, but I wanted to call it out because I think this is a really important topic, especially when we get into some of the larger data models that we have or even data modeling itself. I think it really starts with your data warehouse. And when we get into some of the new features of Power BI, such as data flows, that's gonna bring data warehousing front and center. So definitely check this out. If you're not familiar with what a data warehouse is, take a look at this blog post so that you can get up to speed and start thinking about it. We got a Power BI developer update. This was for the month of September. So everything that happened in September is in this blog post. And inside there are some items called out. First and foremost is the Capacity Metrics app. So this was released last month, but it's available also if you're using Power BI embedded resources from Azure. So definitely check that out. There is an extra step that you need to do in order to get that to work properly with the app itself. And it's called out with a link in the blog post. There were also a couple of application lifecycle items inside of this blog post. The first is updating your connection, so how you can use the APIs to do that. There were some updates that were made to make this easier for you, hopefully it helps. And also with row level security. So previously the string that you passed in couldn't have spaces or things of that nature, but now it includes ASCII characters, which means that you can include spaces, you can do string concatenation, and just pass in whatever string that you want for the username field itself. If you're using custom visuals, be sure to check out the blog post also. They called out that there is a new beta version of the Power BI Visual Tools package, and it has some cool updates in it. Check out the blog post for more details. Links down below for everything that I talk about in this roundup, as well as links to some bonus items as well. Go check it out. We got a blog post talking about the organizational custom visuals, and what this is about is the ability from an enterprise perspective to allow certain visuals to be available from an organization perspective. There are two items associated with this. First off is the fact that you can actually have an area for organizational specific custom visuals. So these are the custom visuals that your organization has blessed and that you can use with inside of your reports. When you go to actually get a custom visual inside of Power BI Desktop, there will be an organization tab where you can see those custom visuals and download those. This also allows you the ability to add line of business specific custom visuals that may not be published to the general public, but are available from an organization standpoint when you sign into Power BI. The other aspect of this is that organizations can end up preventing certain custom visuals from actually being used in your organization. And so from an organizational control perspective, that gives flexibility to your admins as well. So check out this blog post for all the details on how to take advantage of this feature. We also have a blog post talking about how Politico Europe is using Power BI to report on the European elections. This is an awesome example of how Power BI can be used out there in the real world to actually give insights to things that are important to people. Elections are always a interesting topic in terms of what people wanna be able to see what's going on. And so Politico is using those Power BI reports to actually slice and dice over political election information and be able to talk about those items when they're reporting. 
So if you wanna see an example of how this is being used, check out the blog post down below. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. Which item out of all the items I mentioned did you think was the most awesome? Or if there was an item I didn't talk about and you wanted to bring it up to other folks, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.